want to welcome those of you who are here in the Lionsbrook Community Hall, which is the home of Lionsbrook United Church. And welcome to those of you who are joining us from home as you share in this time of worship with us. I'm the Reverend Jim Weber Cook, and I am in ministry with Salt Springs, Scottsburn, Lionsbrook Pastoral Charge of the United Church of Canada. And today, as we gather here to offer God our worship, our worship team includes our organist, Stuart Monroe, our lay reader is Eva Calder. Our minute for ministry presenter on behalf of Funscript is Debbie Crossman. And our singers from the choir uh, offer their gifts as well. And behind our camera, Christine McKenzie is a videographer. And I give thanks for the gifts that they bring. Please note that today's bulletin is dedicated in loving memory of Muriel Irene Sutherland, who was born June the 16th, 1926 and his death occurred on March the 31st, 2012, lovingly remembered by her son, Dan. This afternoon, folks, we are hosting a service of worship at the Shire Town Nursing Home. And uh, it's been a long time since we've been at the Shire Town. We had planned to be there in December, but a breakout of illness uh, prevented that. So we are going there today, all things continuing as they are. And uh, Lionsbrook Scottsburn congregations take the lead, but any are invited to come and join us, lend your voice to the choir, uh, share in this special time of worship, and connect with the residents of the Shire Town. And I hope we'll see a couple of our own good folks there this afternoon, Gladys and Zena. This week on March the 28th, on Tuesday, the official board of Salt Springs Scottsburn Lionsbrook Pastoral Church meets at Salt Springs at 7 p.m. And just a, a word of reminder, um, all reports were to have been sent this past Tuesday to our new board secretary, uh, Shelley Atwin, at our official pastoral charge email address. You'll find that in the bulletin. If by chance you neglected to do that, um, please send those reports as soon as possible today so she can share them with all board members. I want you to note that next Sunday is the gateway to a very special time. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday, and Palm Sunday opens the door to us into Holy Week, and then followed by Easter. And our services next week will be at St. Luke's in Salt Springs at 9.15, and we will move to Scottsburn for the month of April for our 11 o'clock service. It will be our final Sunday for setting the table for Lent, with canned fruit as the designated item. And it will be Cookie Sunday next Sunday, which is always a joy. And uh, we look forward to a time of fellowship and treats downstairs after the service. <laughs> Next Sunday is also Fun Script Sunday. And you'll hear a little bit more about that this morning in our Minute for Ministry, which will focus on Fun Script. Holy Week and Easter are close to us now. And you will see in today's bulletin the uh, services, the special times we will gather for celebrating or observing Good Friday and Easter Sunday. And uh, please take note of that and uh, know what's ahead for us and when we will gather in Christian community. Hi guys and gals, welcome. Yes. Good to see you today. Sorry. No, don't apologize, it's great to have you here. Um, I want to know that I made a mistake more than one, probably, but <laughs> as Joe pointed out, in the note about the yard sales that are coming up this spring, and they're far away yet, but the point of putting it in the bulletin is so that you won't be discarding stuff but saving it when you're spring cleaning or sorting uh, to support your church in the yard sales, both Scottsburn and Lionsville. And that announcement, one place it says June 10th and the other place it says June 9th. Don't ask me why, but anyway, it is June 10th. There are some... Uh, Notes and uh, in the caring corner today, I'll just acknowledge that there was a thank you card received from the Picto West Food Bank, uh, expressing thanks to you, the congregations of Scottsford and Lionsbrook United Churches, for the gifts of food delivered in 2022. It reads, "Thank you for your support in 2022. It is very much appreciated. It is very much appreciated. Your contribution will make it possible for us to help those who struggle to feed themselves." gather, we remember that the light of Christ is within us. 
and stand and sing our introit from your boat. <laughs> giving a sense that spring is in the air. The seasons are turning toward the newness of life. The first signs of brave, the brave crocus are appearing, reaching up to the warming sun. The seasons are turning toward the newness of life. The spring has begun and Easter approaches. Let us also turn toward newness of life. We turn to experience the sacred in this season as we worship God with hopeful spirits and grateful hearts. Our opening hymn is in the bulb, There is a Cloud. It's number 703 in Voices United.
Harold and Ralph and Angus, right? Great to see you again. If you want to sit, you can sit maybe in the front here. Would that be okay? Just so we can talk to you all. And Grace, where is Grace? Grace isn't with you today. No, she's okay. I couldn't see behind there. So good morning to you. It's great to have you here for church today. And as we um, celebrate God's love for us. And um, I love that hymn we say to start church. In the foam, then it's a flower. Isn't that a great song? It's got wonderful images in it. And uh, speaking of flowers, I brought some flowers to show you. Do you like flowers? Yeah. Ta da! <laughs> Aren't they beautiful? No! Oh. Those are flowers. You said they're dead? Yeah. They are. And what are they if they're not flowers? Branches. Sticks! Yeah. You don't like my flowers. No. You think they're just dead sticks? Those are prettier. Those are prettier, aren't they, Molly? <laughs> Well, I am kind of joking around with you. I know these aren't flowers yet. Do you think they could be flowers? Yeah. Yeah? You know what? This, this is from a plant called Forsythia. Forsythia bush. And we have this bush growing at our cottage. And so we cut some of this. You don't think it's going to make the place more beautiful like this? No. You're right. I'm just kind of joking with you. They don't really, uh, they aren't really flowers, are they? But you know what, in springtime, when the rains come, when the rains come and the sun gets warm, do you know what happens? Do you think it could turn into flowers? Look 
what happened. After a whole month and me thinking that there was no life in that bulb, see there's the bulb down in there, a little piece of green started coming, and this has come this much in just one week. And there was life in it. It started to grow, and it's going to be a beautiful flower. I'm going to show you a picture. Believe it or not, this is going to become that. This bulb from the bulb will grow a beautiful flower. There is life in here, even though it doesn't look like it, even though we think not. That's part of the miracle of the world and God's creation. You know, in wintertime, the plants outside, they don't look like they're living at all, do they? They drop, the trees drop their leaves, and everything looks dead, but they're not really. When springtime comes, things start to grow again, and there's new life. That's part of the way God has made things to be. And uh, today, we are going to hear a couple of stories when we're in church here from the Bible about people getting surprised, thinking there was no life there, but then there's new life because God wants there to be new life for us all. God loves us so much that God wants new life to come, even when we think things are like hopeless, or when we think things are done, there's no life there. The way of God is to say, ah, I'm going to surprise you, there's going to be new life coming. So we're going to talk about that, and I think you're going to be making something at Sunday School that also is about new life as well, as we're getting ready for Easter. So let's say a prayer together. Good morning, God. I don't think God could hear that. Okay, good morning, God. Thank you for life's goodness. Thank you that from bulbs come flowers. Thank you for this springtime. And for the gift of new life you give. So we're now going to set our table. So we're going to sing together from your bulletin our song as the food is brought forward. And any of you would like, I'd like your help again to put it all on the table. I'm going to make some room and move these over here.
community of all of us sharing a little, and we can help share food with others. So thank you. Let us say our grace, our table grace, which is in your bulletin. Oh God, by our sharing, we give thanks to you. Bless this food which is set upon the table, and those who will be nourished by it. To those who are hungry, give bread. And to those who have bread, give a hunger for justice. Amen. We'll say our legs again as we remain seated. Oh, 
verses 1 to 45. Martha professes faith in Jesus, and Lazarus is raised to life. A man by the name of Lazarus was sick in the village of Bethany. He had two sisters, Mary and Martha. This was the same Mary who later poured perfume on the Lord's head and wiped his feet with her hair. The sisters sent a message to the Lord and told him that his good friend Lazarus was sick. When Jesus heard this, he said, His sickness won't end in death. It will bring glory to God and to the Son of God. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and her brother, but he stayed where he was for two more days. And then he said to his disciples, Now we will go back to Judah. Teacher, they said, the people there want to stone you to death. Why do you want to go back? Jesus answered, Aren't there twelve hours in each day? If you walk during the day, you will have light from the sun, and you won't stumble. But if you walk during the night, you will stumble, because you don't have any light. Then he told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, and I am going there to wake him up. They replied, Lord, if he is asleep, he will get better. Jesus really meant that Lazarus was dead, but they thought he was talking only about the sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. I'm glad that I wasn't there because now you will have a chance to put your faith in me. Let's go to him. Thomas, whose nickname was Twin, said to the other disciples, Come on, let's go so we can die with him. When Jesus got to Bethany, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was only about two miles from Jerusalem, and many people had come from the city to comfort Martha and Mary because their brother had died. When Martha heard that Jesus had arrived, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Yet even now, I know that God will do anything you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will live again. Martha answered, I know that he will be raised to life on the last day, when all the dead are raised. Jesus then said, I am the one who raises the dead to life. Everyone who has faith in me will live, even if they die. And everyone who lives because of faith in me will never really die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are Christ, the Son of God. You are the one we hoped would come into the world. After Martha had said this, she went and privately said to her sister Mary, The teacher is here. And he wants to see you. As soon as Mary heard this, she got up and went out to Jesus. He was still outside the village where Martha had gone to meet him. Many people had come to comfort Mary. And when they saw her quickly leave the house, they thought she was going to the tomb to cry. So they followed her. Mary went to where Jesus was. And then as soon as she saw him, she knelt at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw that Mary and the people with her were crying, he was terribly upset and asked, Where have you put his body? They replied, Lord, come and you will see. Jesus started crying, and the people said, See how much he loved Lazarus? And some of them said, He gives sight to the blind. Why couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still terribly upset. So he went to the tomb, which was a cave with a stone rolled against the entrance. And then he told the people to roll that stone away. But Martha said, Lord, you know that Lazarus has been dead four days, and there will be a bad smell. Jesus replied, didn't I tell you that if you had faith, you would see the glory of God? 
after the stone had been rolled aside, Jesus looked up toward heaven and prayed, Father, I thank you for answering my prayer. I know that you always answer my prayers, but I said this so that the people here would believe that you sent me. When Jesus had finished praying, he shouted, Lazarus, come out. The man who had been dead came out. His hands and feet were wrapped with strips of burial cloth, and a cloth covered his face. Jesus then told the people, untie him and let him go. Many of the people had come to visit Mary, saw the things that Jesus did, and they put their faith in him. Thank you, Eva, for drawing us into that incredible story. Stories. And thank you, choir, for the gift of liveliness in their bones this morning. You know, I believe that all of us have stood where Martha, Mary, and Jesus stand in that story. Experiencing grief and filled with sorrow. Perhaps feeling confused and angry and despairing as a result of the death of someone they love. All of us have stood on such shaky ground of feeling loss and profound change when someone we have cared about has died. It's pretty easy, I think, to put ourselves in their shoes, I mean sandals, and to enter into this story, to think of how it was for us, as it was for the sisters of Lazarus and for Jesus, who are distraught and weeping in their grief. And I believe, too, that all of us have some understanding of what it means to be dry bones. To have the wind knocked out of us because of the circumstances of our lives, whether it be due to situation of grief or disappointment of some kind, of some failure, or situations of misguided choices, or mistreatment by others, or a spiritual crisis that has left us feeling cut off from God and feeling that there's little meaning in life. I believe we can all easily relate to finding ourselves in the valley of dry bones where life has been knocked out of us. These two stories, one a vision from the experience of the prophet Ezekiel in which he was to tell and bring hope to the Israelite people, and the other a tale that's told only in John's gospel about a death and loss and the experience of grief are quite relatable stories for us who have also felt those same emotions at times in our life. Death, despair, disappointment, heartache, grief, despondency. It's all part of life, isn't it? There are places we find ourselves at times, those same places. And as a result, we too weep, we shed our tears, as was the case for Mary and Jesus. I'm not sure about Martha. Martha seems to be um, a more stoic type. The story doesn't really say that Martha grieved in the same way, and that's true of us, isn't it? Each of us grieves in our own way. Some unable to push down the pain, and so it comes to our tear ducts. And others who very stoically, like Martha, seem to take control and go about their business. We are confounded at times by life's events and circumstances, which leave us sometimes feeling angry. Sometimes dealing with the what-ifs. Like the sisters. Jesus, what if you had come earlier? What if you had come when we asked you? Our brother wouldn't have died. We also end up sometimes bargaining with sacred powers to bring about a different outcome. We sometimes too feel that all the life is drained out of us and we are rendered nothing more than feeling like a pile of bones, unable to act, filled with powerlessness and uselessness and feeling apathetic and defeated. 
This morning, these stories open us to consider the times where we have been in those very places, where we have been grieving, where we have been feeling like we're in a valley of dry bones. And I invite you now in a moment of silence to just take a moment to think back to some of those times and experiences in your life. Maybe they were a long time ago. Or perhaps they're more recent or even current right now, experiencing some of that. Touch again in your memory the feelings of loss or defeat or the feelings created by circumstances in which it seemed you were crushed. Valley of Dry Bones is real. Grief is real. Loss is real. But of course, that's not only what these stories are all about. They're also about restoration, renewal, and return to life. These stories reveal to us that we need not stay mired or stuck there in our grief, in our pain, in our lifeless existence, because God is in the business of restoring life. God is in the business of renewing life, empowering us and enlivening us and healing us. That is the promise of our Christian faith. That is the good news of Christ's gospel in a nutshell. And that is the experience of the very creation itself. The earth knows this. The earth knows this. The earth knows at its very core that life returns in the unfolding of the seasons. Winter shrouds the earth in what appears to be death. But spring, spring brings renewal and new life. We are witnessing that transformation even now in these earliest days of this springtime. I, uh, I wrote the call to worship that we shared for worship today after I walked along the Samson Trail one day this past week. It's one of the places where I like and try to walk. And I was marveling at what I was seeing and hearing. And as I came home and reflected on that, I wrote those words to gather us in worship today. New life is in the earth. New life is, dare I say it, in us. New life is God's design. The Spirit breathes new life into tired and defeated bones. That was the meaning of Ezekiel's vision to encourage the Hebrew people in what was for them a very disastrous situation in hopeless time. And Jesus spoke through tears. And Lazarus is restored to life again and exits from the tomb as the words of Martha echo in our ears. I am the one, Jesus said, who raises the dead to life. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, though they die, yet will they live. And who those who live and believe in me will never die. And soon, friends, very soon, we are going to come to another tomb and experience another grief following another death. And new life will emerge from that tomb, too. We know this. It is still Lent. I don't want to rush things too far, but the scriptures for this day provide us a foreshadowing of what is to come as we move toward Easter. A foreshadowing of what is ahead for Jesus. And dare I say it, for us too. Life will be restored in the Valley of Dry Bones in tombs at which tears flow in grief, and in the very earth itself in this springtime season, life will be restored. Life will be restored in the midst of our lives when we feel deflated and defeated, when we feel the wind has been knocked out of us and life's goodness has drained from us, when we feel the brokenness of heart and spirit as we grieve. 
as we feel all that comes with the ending of relationships or situations which cause us to be filled with despair and hopelessness. New life will emerge. That is God's way. That is God's promise. God's Spirit will be breathed anew into us and we will come alive again. God's power and love will not and cannot be defeated by death, but will overcome death and new life will spring forth. This is God's way. This is God's promise. The earth knows. The earth knows this, as God's creation is even now being renewed and coming alive again. And don't forget, we are part of this creation too. John Birch has penned this poem, which I want to close with. A sleeping world emerges to new possibilities. Weakening winter's icy grip and bird song and sprouting bulb announce to all the promise that in due season creation bursts into life. And whilst leaves that fell in winter lie upon the ground, soon to feed the earth in nature's wondrous cycle of death and rebirth, within the tree is a stirring of new life. By God's grace, may there also be within you a stirring of new life and of growth in this season as we honor the gift and promise of God. Amen. Our focus returns to the table again. And it has been said that to a hungry person, new life is the gift of a meal. Please join me in our affirmation for this Lenten season. Together, we dare to dream of a world in which hunger is unknown, where scarcity is an illusion, and everyone has a place at the table. We dare to dream of a world in which generosity is the norm, where greed finds no foothold, and there is more than enough for all. We dare to dream of a world in which love rules, where compassion is the first response, and there is no place for bigotry. We dare to dream, we dare to pray, we dare to believe. And we join to sing, As Comes the Breath of Spring, number 373 in Voices of Earth.
it's not something new, but perhaps with new people here, it may be new to you. So, just an update on what's been happening with Israel. As most of you know, our three churches in this pastoral charge have been participants in the Fundstrip program, which is a fundraising program that requires virtually no work and no time except for the administrators. And this program has earned us many thousands of dollars since we have joined the program. Now, as I said, most folks here today already know how the program works. But we want to encourage those who may be new to our congregations to consider becoming participants. Here's how Funscript works. If I buy a $50 gift card for a local store, I pay $50 with no tax, and I get $50 with the merchandise. And your church gets a percentage of that purchase from the Funscript company. Last year, Linesbrook United received a return of $2,170 for the year 2022, and Scottsburg received a total for the year of $1,945. The first Sunday of each month is designated as Funstrip Sunday, and we tell, phone, or email our administrator which cards we would like to order, and we send an e-transfer or pay cash to our treasurer for the cost of the card order. The orders are placed, and we receive the cards the following Sunday. The administrator for Linesbrook is Susan Brooks, and the money goes to Lori Sutherland. The administrator for Scottsburg is Hilton Moore, and the money goes to Carolyn Carrington because they're the treasurers, I better clarify that. <laughs> I have copies here. If anyone is interested in joining us, I have copies here, and I will leave them on the pew here. There's only four. If you need more, get in touch with me. So, um, those, you can, um, it gives a whole, sorry, two papers here. It gives a, uh, a list of all the different, um, businesses and all the possible cards that you could buy from Funscript. And it tells you the percentage that the Funscript company gives us. Um, some of them, um, even as much as 10% of the purchase goes back to the church. So there's lots of information on that. If you'd like to have a copy, pick one up off the queue before you leave. And each month has special promotions if you would each month has special promotions, and for this month they are as follows. Walmart is offering 3.5%, and that's up from 3%. The Ultimate Dining Card offers 7%, and it is up from its normal 5%. And a store called Aldo offers 12%, up from 10%. Do you have any questions? I can hopefully answer no? Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Debbie, and uh, we certainly are grateful to our administrators, Susan and Hilton, for the work they do in helping us support our churches each month. Let us pray together now. Holy One, in faith we gather our prayers now, thankful for all the blessings of our lives. Despite the forecast for snow on this very day, this spring day, we look hopefully to nature's rebirth after this dormant and cold season of winter. We look forward to the feeling of sunshine warming our faces and the sight of spring bulbs sprouting anew from the earth. We are grateful, O oh God, for those times when a thoughtful and caring word is spoken to us and our hearts are lifted and we feel renewal of life. We're grateful for acts of compassion that lessen the burden of pain, of grief, or of struggle for us. And how we feel a newness of life come to us through the care of others. We thank you for stories of faith which speak deep spiritual truths to our hearts. Which remind us that in you there is life renewed and restored. We are grateful for this hope and this promise 
and for the goodness in our days and for the ever-present power of your spirit in whom we live and move and breathe. Breathe your spirit anew, O God, we pray, into those whose souls and bodies and minds need a healing touch, those who are sick, those who are lonely, those who are grieving or weakened. We particularly pray for the families of Walter Thompson, Brandon Jerwar, and Faye Heighton Williams, that you may comfort and uphold them. Breathe your spirit, O God, into those who are feeling down, feeling depressed or confused, and who search for hope in the midst of their particular valleys or struggles. Breathe your spirit of peace with justice to the situations of this world where fighting and hatred and violence continue to deal in the ways of death. Breathe your spirit so that new life may emerge. And it's with particular concern that we continue to pray for the people of Ukraine and the people of Haiti and the people of any land where oppression and injustice are entrenched by the powers that rule, including Uganda. In the spirit that unites us, O God, breathe again into your church, that we may have hope despite the changes and challenges faced in this ever-increasing secular age, that we may still be empowered for a ministry which is vital, in which we can carry good news where it's yearned for and most needed, where we can offer the hope that's found in you and in the story of our Christian faith which culminates in Easter in the gift of new life. May all our prayers be embodied by our actions as people who journey with hope in Christ and to seek with him to renew this world with your justice and peace, your power and your love. We gather these prayers and we join them together in the words that Jesus taught his followers as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. To the tune of Danny Boy, with words of faith, we sing, We Shall Go Out with Hope of Resurrection, number 586 in Voices United.
still not snowing. <laughs> but there's more good news. We are a people of Christian faith who profess the gift of new life which comes to us through the power of God's love. So now from our Lenten table and the table of God's grace, let us move again into this world, ready to extend the abundance of God's love to all, trusting that God's goodness is stronger than evil, that love is stronger than hate, and that life is stronger than death. And may the blessing of God give us strength for this journey. May the spirit of wisdom give us a vision for the road. And may the love of Christ make us caring companions as together we go forth into this new week. Amen. God sends me to the world to me at once.